opening of this week's Pasha, which is Pasha Tuva, and we're referring to chapter Kofhei, um, Posik uh, Ches, and Posik Tes. And this is a, uh, this is a Klali on, uh, on Pasha Truma. It's taking place on uh, Thursday, uh, Thursday evening, early, um, um, where are we right now? Um, what's today? I, I forget the dates and the day. Hmm? Oh, yeah. So it's early, early on base. So it was Hoydish order. Um, Tovshin Ayin base. Right. So the policy we're referring to is that um, after having commanded that you didn't give truma, and they give, uh, it's one of the were different trumas were given uh, in the form of maxis a shekel by the Yidin in the Midbar. Oh, but this particular truma had no limit to it. Each one could give according to his nidvas, to according to the generosity of his heart. And then there's all the 13 or, or 15 things that Moshe Rabbeinu mentioned Zov and Aches, Vochesov and Achesis, there's Chelus, Vargoman, and all the different uh, inyonim that have to be given for the necessity of um, uh, having the materials for the base of Mikdosh. And then the Pasik says, Vi Osuli Mikdosh, Veshochanti Besechom. And you should make me a, a sanctuary, literally, a holy place, or as Rashi says, a base Kedusha. Um, and I will dwell uh, in you. And it's well known the uh, the famous drosha brought in Chiddush um, in the name of Chazal, even though it's not a Maimah Chazal per se, but it's a Maimah from the Shlach Kodesh and a few of the other great, uh, very early Kadmonim uh, by Eden. Uh, it's not written that the Abish will dwell inside the sanctuary, yeah. but when it was standing, and, and the stomach, the Vadai when it was standing, and how much more so uh, when it was standing, if even when it was not standing, the Kavana was to be Gilel Akus by each and every individual Yid, Benafshoi, Vachayo, Bavidos, Lashem, should be the, the revelation of El Akus through the Migdosh. But it's called Echad Vechad, Veshochanti Besei Chom, amongst uh, the Yid. And uh, that would tend to indicate that uh, as the Rebbe the Tzom of Tzedek brings down at length in the um, mitzvah in Derech Mitzvah Stoch, Binyan Hamidosh, that all the details of the Mishkan, not just the building of the Mishkan itself, the actual um, house of the, of the Mishkan, but all the Kalim, and all the uh, things that were used in the Mishkan, uh, particularly for the Hakrovas HaKobonis, like the Mizbeach, and uh, things can ever do is bear. All those in Yonim are Ramuzim, they indicate in Yonim, uh, both in the Shomayim Vo'oretz, in the whole creation, and they indicate also different aspects within the Adam himself, and how we should use them to serve the Avisha. Well, that's the whole purpose of the sanctuary, was to be a, a, a mockim of a Vedas HaKadosh Baruch And if all, E it, uh, each limb and each portion of the body uh, is connected somehow with the with the different kalim and the different things in the Mishkan and the different aspects of the way even the Neshama uh, reveals itself to a mensch, whether it be with their Pneumius or whether it be with their uh, Makif, uh, all those in Yonim and Nilmas 
in the uh, clay of Mishkan and the building of Mishkan. Uh, what uh, Makif is the union of uh, the aspects of the Nisham which can't come into the body because of their elevation in, uh, in godly source, or but nonetheless they have an effect on the Odom, Lamaila Mitan Vadas, you know, even Mashiach Nefesh, in Yonim Ka'ila, Chai Yechida, in Yonim of Teche uh, Vavida, not limited uh, by the Koiches Aguim of the Nefesh, the revealed Koiches, and then all the different Koiches Apnimim Vaya Giluim that there are by the Odom, all of them are Neomas uh, in the clay and portions and the Mizbeches, etc., of the Mishkan. That's the Indian Asuli Mikdosh. There has to be the, the, the Mikdosh Kashmi, or the Mikdosh Kashmi, its main purpose was to be the Shokhanti Besef Chom, that uh, that should bring Gile Lakus in the way that it was in the in Mikdosh, and through the usage of those Kalim and all those in Yonim in the autumn, uh, that he should be, uh, as it were, a, a living. Uh, Mikdosh and a living uh, sanctuary. And that's also to indicate, as I said in the Zohar Kodesh, that all the aspects of the Mishkan indicate uh, different levels in the creation. Uh, for the in the creation, Gashmi, out near Lamata, all of them are reflected in the in the different aspects of the, of the Mishkan. So the Mishkan was like a uh, an intense uh, intensification of a uh, a huge number of details. Bein ba elam hagodil, what that's the elam kloli, and bein ba odom hakoton, elam hakoton, what that's the odom. Come over and the uh, obvious the Reb Nosson that the odom is like a elam koton. He's got all the all the different aspects of the bria in, in general in him, uh, and in a similar way, all these inyanim are reflected in the midosh. Then I get to how they can be used and be part of the whole Clovis of Vedas Hashem. That's the Indian for Shokhanti Besechom, but even Clovis. But that indicates a, a ik uh, godel, that the whole building of the, of the Mishkan was in order that there should be Gile Alakus in people. The whole purpose of the Mishkan wasn't so much to be just uh, uh, a place uh, where you had all sorts of beautiful kalim in order to offer up certain services to the Avisha. But the Ike function of the, Mik uh, the Mishkan, the Pnimius and the Chitanius, or the Golui of Oponim, was to cause Gile Lakus in each and every individual of Fides, where Shochanti Be Bechon. But that just leads to a Derech, it's not the main purpose of the Shia, but it leads to an interesting Indian of what we might call like an Ifcha Mistabra. I saw in a great safer just now when I was coming down. He says a very interesting thing that normally people think that um, uh, because things weren't the way they should be uh, at the end of Bias Rishon and now Bias Shani, and therefore the Abishta, as it were, fought about a Khurban and he, he destroyed the, you know, the base of Mikdash. It means that the Ika, uh, the Abishta wanted to punish the world, as it were, therefore he took away the base of. He took away the base, base of Mikdash. Um, and therefore, they can't be in the same way that it was when the base of Mikdash was standing, because he took away the, the base of Mikdash. However, he says that really it goes the other way around. That it would appear that the Ik is the base of Mikdash, is like a result. So he says, no, the whole purpose of the Mishkan was to bring about and the whole preservation of the Mikdash was placed into the hands of Yidin. In other words, that the base of Mikdash moved into the Neshoma of every Yid. I don't know, Kovay, the Yidin were, you know, were into their uh, uh, task in the world to carry out rots and Hashem and to serve the Abishta. I don't know, the Mikdash was there. But if the Yidin sinned, Mepnei Chato'inu, Golinu Me'atzeinu, the whole Golas came about Mitzad the Inifan, Chet, what chet is like driving away the Elikus out of your neshama. Once you didn't drove away the, the, the uh, Elikus from their neshama, then there was no point in the Mishkan. Oh, the, the Mishkan's whole inner was to cause that by them. Because if, if, if they've driven that away, 
then the kill the Mishkan it doesn't have any point. And therefore the Ebsh took away the Mishkan because Mipnei Chatoinu Yagalinu Mitenu. Because of the driving away of Elakus from the Mishkoma, this is what caused the Chubin Beis Amidish. Or not the Chubin Beis Amidish caused the driving away from the Elakus from the Mishkoma. It's the, it's the other way around. What Lapisa is a, a, a cloud Godel, that how do we rebuild the Beis Amidish? If we will rebuild ourselves the way we should be, we should be built. In other words, and that's uh, the whole Nakuda that we see from the Rebbe, uh, from the, all the Rebbein, beginning with the Baal Shem Tov, and even the Arizal, and, and uh, Mamesh Kola, there was Behele Malch upon him, uh, the Indian of Limud Pnimi Satur, uh, the, the way to come to the Kavona Pnimi is a very Indian, is to learn uh, Pnimi Satur, Davke. And then together with Pnimi Satur, we find a tremendous new move by the Rebbe, to go back to the Pashtas of the Mishkan, and you have to, first of all, you have to learn all the, uh, all the Inyanim in Pnei which will make you behave the way you should, and then you have to prepare Poshet in Gashmias, that if you're going to be better, and you're going to bring about as much as you can, and through Afotas and Mayonas, you're going to bring about, by a huge group of Eden, a return to the whole purpose of the Mishkan, which was your Shokanti Basei Chom, the whole purpose of not so much the actual Mishkan hotel, but the, the Shokhanti Vesei Chom, and you bring that about as much as you can, then Yahadim Zer, there has to be a, a tremendous busyness with the laws of the Mishkan, so you have to know the laws of the Mishkan in order to put up you know, the Gashmias, because ultimately speaking, uh, the one is dependent in the, in the other, the, 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 the Uftu, the uh, result, of, of bringing about that Yidin should return to their Nishomas, build their Mishkan, yeah, without necessarily knowing all the Rotim, well, that's what leads eventually to the, the, the Mishkan Begashmias. Ayatokhi Vazoi, yeah, from those that the Mishkan Begashmias seems to take a, a, a slightly, as it were, second place in the Ike is Yidin. What the answer to a certain extent is Ein Nochanami. Of a Le'idok, each of the Alter Rebbe answers in Kutetur and Pasha, Pinchas, and the Alter Rebbe said, "If he you can say that the Ruchnistik and Mishkan, each person is much higher in a way than the Gashmistik. Since in Golas we have at least the the, the Ruchnistik and Mishkan, what do we need the Mishkan and Gashmis for? You know, like I just pointed out, everything appears to be dependent be Ika on the Matzav of Yidden. What do you need? What's what's the insistence that you must have, and the Rebbe says, you want to be some Middush Bimheira, is the Ike, you know, we have to work from the, the much of Bapinimis, we have to get into learning the, the halachas of the Mishkan, Bapashtas, Hakib Shuta, not just to know what used to be, but to, to know how we should build, to be involved in the etzim of building the Beis Amidish Bapashtas. So why does it lie, if we have it in such a high madriga in the way of Betoi Chanevish, then what do we need in the Gashmi? So therefore the old Rebbe answers that the, the ultimate purpose of the creation was Dira Loi is Bora Betaktenim. And Dira Loi is Bora Betaktenim doesn't just mean in the Nefesh of each and every person or each and every Yid, and ultimately speaking, maybe even in the Umas Ha'ilam as much as their Shaya, to their Sheva Mitzvah Svenaya Vachulu, that no, there's an in and it should be Dafki, be Gashmi Ha'ilam Kapshute, and the mile of the base of Migdash are Gashmi, that when they offer up the Korbanis, and then they saw miracles in an oven of Gile Alakus Mamish in the oil of Gashmi, and Eishmin and Shomayim, and they saw how the Gashmi stick of Korbanis you know, went up into uh, 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 the, the Eish, Allah Mizbech, and they caused you know, tremendous Hashpoyas, Bain Begashmi, Bain Baruchnias, and I remember the base of Migdash was a union of the, uh, of the highest Madragas of Gile Alakus with the uh, avonim and with the simple pashtas of the stones, you do the whole beer in Torah. This week there has to be built a few stones and stuff. Lamata mata, with the whole arichas. So the ma'ira the mikdash in Gashmias is the stuff here, the shlemus of dira b'taktenu. However, lafi amavu aliyu, that is caused stuff here by the mikdash aruchni vapnimi etzel kol echad ve'echad. That gives rise to the Hamshokha of the ultimate dear Eloi is but but in the Mikdash Agashmi. Or not the other way around. Not that the Mikdash Agashmi caused that. No, that Bi'ika causes that. And I'm here to 
It's an interesting uh, and a fascinating uh, nakuda uh, to uh, reflect about. The to develop on it, but that's not the main person's flat. So anyway, we see that following that, yeah, it says the Abish like this. Kakil Asher Ani Mare Ois for Ace Tavnis Hamishkon, the Ace Tavnis Ko Kalov, the Hain Tasu. He said, You uh, should build, make me a Midrash and, and uh, I will dwell amongst you. He said, According to all that I have shown you here on the mountain. Yeah? In other words, Kakil Asher Ani Mare, not that I have shown, but I am showing you. It's like a a present tense, like a present ongoing tense. I am showing you, yeah, the the um, shape and the, the making of the Mishkan, uh, how do you call it, the details, shape of the Mishkan, the Eish Tavnis Ko Kelo, yeah, and the, as it were, um, the shape and the makeup of all the Kalim, of all the vessels that we use, the Chain Tasu, and so you should do. and so you should do. So as the the Shaila, Mela, that's what is written. Hashem said to build the Mikdash, and uh, I will dwell amongst you according to all that I've shown you. Meaning you have to do exactly according to what I've shown you here on on uh, Mount Sinai, uh, with all the details, both of the Tavnis Amishkan, based Tavnis Ko Kelov. Vachain Tasu. So I said to Shalom, what is that expression, Vachain Tasu? Vachain Tasu is like a doubling up, because you already said, Asuli Migdash, Vashokhanti Besoichom. Yekakur, Asher Nimare, Echa, Eish Tavnis, and Meshkok. That's enough. According to what I've shown you here, I've already said to you, yeah, Asuli Migdash. What does he gain by adding Vachain Tasu? And that's the way you should do it. He's already said how you should do it. Yeah. Uh, if I mean, it's like a, a doubling of the expression. So here comes along a, a fascinating Indian where Rashi says on that. Uh, where's the Rashi here? I know it's a very tricky comment. I don't know where, where they have all the Rashi's. Oh, so here says Rashi. The Chain Tasu says Rashi Ladoiri. Oh, this is the way you should do for all the generations to come. Meaning in Pashtas that this is not going to be the only sanctuary. There's going to be ones in the future. The base Amigdash Rishon, base Amigdash Shani. Uh, even to a certain extent, I feel a heavy base of Rishon Ashlisi. And so the way I've shown you here, well, that's the way it's going to be done so in generations to come. Says Rashi, what does that mean? The pastors in Pshat here in the in the Chumash, im yoeved echad min akelim, it should be lost or damaged. Yeah, one of the the kelim, oi kishetasu li clay base elom, or if you make me the kelim, the clay base elom, the kelim of the base elom, and base elom is the base of Migdash later in the time. Of Shalim uh, Miller, Kagain, Shulchanes, Omenares, Vakioires, Omochainais, Shaosa Shlime. All the different Kaelin that Shlime made, Ketavnis Elo Taso Esav. You must do them according to the shape and the size, or the the, the, the building and the shape of these Kaelin that we're talking about now. In other words, of the Mishkan. The Rashi says maybe when he says v'chein tasu, he's referring to what's coming later. He said if if it if it were referring to what's coming later, it didn't need to be written with a vol. He could have said kein tasu, do like this and this, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But since he said do it according to everything that I've said v'chein tasu. It must be that all I've shown you and all I've indicated to you on the heart, that's what you have to do. Is, uh, 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 I mean, he's already told him what he has to do. Why did he add the v'chein tasu? Is a sign that that v'chein tasu is mechubel not moving further, but it's joined up to what was written earlier. 
And what we should know is the details that have been mentioned or shown to him and given to him as a vision when he was on the high. That's how you have to do it. So I see so that sometimes that's unnecessary. So then we have to say that that means for the generations to come. So Rashi says that's got two possibilities. Generations to come can mean even while the Mishkan is still in the desert or when it moves first into its soil, that if one of the Kedim be lost, then you have to remake it exactly according to that shape. And in the, when you build the base on Mikdash, also that's the way you have to make uh, the Kedim according to what we, we've mentioned uh, here. And of course, the the uh, would appear all the aspects of the Migdash. Now, Rashi gets that expression, V'chein L'doireis, that's referring to uh, all generations to come. Rashi gets that from a Gemara. Over the, the uh, f uh, further uh, uh, in what Rashi's mentioned, are there Rashi's uh, additional direct uh, d development of the Gemara for the sake of the pshat in the posik here in the Chumash. In other words, the Gemara talking about a, another in which I'll soon mention to you, and Rashi's developing the pshat for the sake of the pirush on the spot in the Chumash that you should understand the pshat of the posik benegir lapuyo uh, uh, to the keli mamishkin and to the actual usage of the loshenus in the in the posik. Kol Rashi what I'm showing you. Well, what's he showing him? He's showing him the different kingdom and the different dinyonim and the dinyan amigdash. Well, that's how you have to do also for the generations, meaning that if they're lost or if they'll be a base amigdash, that's also how you have to do that. Now, where did Rashi get that? He got it from a, a Gemara Mesekta Shvois, which brought down here also in the brackets in some Chumosh, it's brought down. The, the, it's a Mishnah and a Gemara Mesekta Shvois. And the Mishnah and the Gemara over there I talk about somebody who's Tommy. He's Tommy Mace, and he's not allowed to go into the base of Midas when he's Tommy. And if he does, then if he goes in Beshwegeg, then he has to bring called Mukhatos, which, you know, all the different halachas refer to somebody who's Tommy, not allowed to go into the base of Midas. So the, the Mishnah says at the beginning of the second parak in Shwiz, and the Mishnah says that that means not only just the base of Midas, it also means the courtyard of the base of Midas. You have the courtyard around, which that's called the Azora. But in the Mishkan, it was fenced around by the um, by the poles and the, uh, what do you call them, the Kloim, the uh, curtains around the uh, courtyard of the Mishkan. That's called Azora. Ela is not only the Azora, but also the Toisephus Azora. That if the Yidin added on to the Azora, they added for perfect practical purposes, they needed some more space or they needed to build another lishko or something. So they added on to the size of the Azora or to Yerushalayim, to the city of Yerushalayim. Then they have to have, uh, they have to have a Novi, they have to have a, a, a Melech, they have to have the Sanhedrin, and they have to have, uh, uh, they have to bring certain Korbanes, Korban Teido, and then they have to have certain Shirim that the Levim have to sing, and the whole thing, all those together, then they can add on to the to the to the Azora. So if you're a Tommy and you walk into that additional part that they added on, you're also Chayv Chas for sure. You're allowed to go in there. So the Gemara says, where do I know that I've got to have all these things in order to add on to the Azora? Maybe I can just add on and say that this has now become holy and, and just say something, a few kapit like Tilim or something. <laughs> Why do we have to have all these in on him? Because the Gemara does, because it's written here, V'chein, yeah, Tasu says the Gemara, yeah, Chayin Tasu Ladoiris in all the generations to come. So the Gemara learns out that Chayin Tasu is referring just like when Moshe made the first courtyard of the base of Mitzvah. Moshe Rabbeinu was a king of the Yidden. He was also the Novi. He was the chief Novi of all Yidden, and uh, he had the Kohen Gadol, who was his brother, was Aaron. He had the Shivim Zakanim. Well, that was the Sanhedrin, and also the Gemara learns out from Sukkim that they also had a Korban Teda and they on him. When they, when they made the Azorah, Lamelech Chayin Tasu, in all the generations to come, if you want to add on to the Azorah, you've got to have it all that's got to be done through a Novi and through a king and through all those things. So we see that Rashi, as this uh, Joshua, Chayin Tasu, 
referring to the generations to come and connecting the base of Migdosh with the, and Yerushalayim with the, 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 the Mishkan, uh, he's got a Mafur Shikamaru that does that. And this is that Rashi develops on it slightly as not only referring to just that particular ceremony, making the Azor a bit bigger or even Yerushalayim bigger, uh, but it's referring to uh, if you want, if you lose one of the kalim, or when you come to build the base of Mikdash in Yerushalayim, generations later, you have to make all the kalim the, the same as this. Uh, Rashi develops on that, and he uses the drosha that Gemara and Masech Shuiz also to apply to this. So it comes along the Ramban, and the Ramban uh, throws a bit of a, a doubt in this whole thing that Rashi says, and he says that Lachoira. If we look at the base of Amigdash that Shlomo Melech built, then we find that, for example, the Mizbeach that Shlomo made was much, much different measurements than the Mizbeach in the, in the, uh, in the Mishkan. The Mizbeach in the Mishkan was relatively small in size, and relatively uh, low in height. In the base of Amigdash, it was much, much bigger. And uh, different measurements uh, altogether, it would seem, uh, to the ones in the, in the Mishkan. And also there were other differences that Shalim Amelot didn't follow exactly all of the Inyonim. For example, another well-known difference is that in, in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, on the Kapoiras over the Oran Kodesh, there were Shnei Kruvim. Right? There were two um, cherubs, right? And they were, according to what we learn here in, in the next portion here in the Chumash, they were made out of the Kapoiras, out of the covering over the Oran they were developed and hammered and that out of the gold, and they came up, and they their literally feet and their base was on the lid of the of the um, of the actual uh, or in a Kodesh. That's called the Kapoiris. Of in the base of Mikdash that Shlomo Melo built, there were two Kruvim, and their feet were on the ground outside the at the other two ends of the Orin, and they were very tall, and they stood up, and then they. They bent over, and their wings and everything came together. They were different than the crew in the uh, in the uh, Orin, uh, how it was in the, in the Mishkan. On that basis comes on the Ramban, and the Ramban says that he finds it hard to, to agree with that because we see that Shlomo Amalek didn't go according uh, exactly to the measurements of the Kalim how they are here. And Rashi is saying that if you lose or in the base Eloma, you've got to make the Kalim according to, to these that are mentioned here in the Parsha. So therefore, um, the Ramban said he doesn't understand that we do find differences in some of the Kalim. So therefore, the Ramban comes up with a simple answer. And he said the word Vachain Tasu doesn't refer to the past or to the future like the Ibn Israel wants to suggest that it does. But he says, it's just a, a form of a zeroes, how do you call it, of, of a adding energy to the, uh, the everything in the base of meat has to be done with the, you know, with the fire and enthusiasm. The chayin tasu, this is the way you should do it, meaning let's get moving and let's do it, and we have to do it with the, yeah, with a full um, with a full enthusiasm and a full brand. It was like a lotion of added energy to the people that he was giving the uh, commandment to. But it's not the chain tasu. Let's get moving. That's the way you should do it. But not that it's a, a connection with before or after or history or things like that. So now we'll see about that Ramban a little bit further as we go uh, down the line. But it's not uh, apparently it's not so simple. But anyway, it comes along certain people and they say that they don't understand what really the Ramban. What's his problem with uh, Rashi? Because Rashi brings the Gemara. Rashi, uh, I mean, they say it in the Gemara. So the only way you could say that, um, that Rashi is maybe different than the Gemara here than what he is in the Gemara, because in the Gemara it's talking about a, a general thing like adding on to the Azor. It's not talking about all the details of the, of the Mishkan. It's talking about where you want to add on, where you want to go further than what the original thing was. Oh, but maybe in the actual uh, things themselves there could be differences. It doesn't refrain to us. So come on, certain great Mephoshim, they don't agree with that difference because they say that since it's written in the Gemara of Achein Ladoilis and the Gemara brings a dogma that has to be done exactly the way it was done, then why would there be a difference between a, a physical athlete making bigger and there you have to be very much on all the measurements 
If you want to make bigger, then you have to have all these things like right from the very beginning. What's the difference between that or any other union in the soft or soft? The Gemara does say, Vachelaturis, meaning that the way you did it in the Mishkan, that's the way you got to do it in the Duris. He comes along and he brings a lotion in the Gemara with the Sugi and Mesek Shuiz, but the Gemara asks a question, answer to it, makes it look as if the whole Mishkan is included in that, like Rashi says, which means that Rashi's got a Gemara on which to base himself. As the Gemara says, it's actually a Mishnah. The, uh, well, it's not actually the lotion of the Mishnah, Mamish, but it's based on an immediate beer in the Mishnah. Rashi's got a good point. However, Ramban's kashe, the, the Mizbeach and the Kruvim, that were different. Well, that is a, a, that's an interesting kasha, a stacha a kasha. So it comes on, there's a very great Mokodesh on, on Rashi. He was one of the first great Rabbonin, it was Mafarish uh, Rashi, the Pirish of Rashi, Alechumesh. And he was called the Rabbein El Elio HaMizrochi. And the Mizrochi was a very great going very early, from very early, early Acharenim. And he wrote this famous beer on the whole, all, almost the whole Rashi and, and the whole Torah with a great deal of discussion and pilpul and, and Mari Makimis and Makudas for Rashi, etc., etc., etc. So he comes along the Mizrochi and he wants to get Rashi out of that problem. But Slavi has to get us all out of the problem because it, it seems to be interesting that Slavi Mamelak in certain ways didn't go according to Rashi's um, basic principle that everything got to be according to how it was in the Mishkan. What did Hagav, just before we get on to uh, what the Rabbeinu Leo Mizrahi says, Lachora we could just in a general way that Rashi was concerned by another basic, very basic question, and that's why he learns the way he did. And a very basic question that arises in our minds, that if we're going to say that the Beis Amikdash was different than the Mishkan, <coughs> and the Beis Amikdash Lishi, certainly looks as if it's going to be different than things were in the Mishkan, then ask yourself the question, why did the Torah write all this tremendous detail at the Mishkan, Mamish with all the details and the, the curtains and the, you know, a lot of these things didn't occur in the Beis Amikdash, and that are not really important for me to know in the generations to come. And the fast is Russia, oh yes, they are. You need to know for all the generations because you've got to make all the, the Kalim exactly the way these are. Well, therefore, everybody you're learning, Pasha Truma, needs to know the way the Mishkot was in the desert. Because it's going to be, uh, in many uh, Pratim, it's going to be what you've got to do in the later things. I maybe certainly knew him not, but I still the question. The whole building was different. You know, so wh why would there be this uh, connection? So Rashi, a kasha for myself, but that's a, that's a machine. Because Rashi wants to avoid the problem of Khaira that arouses in the mind of the simple reader. Why do I need to know all these things if they're not necessarily going to be noyeg ladurs and all the purism that have been said in Pasha Truma are just tremendous? Why do I need to know all this? Therefore, Rashi says, "Oh, you do because." They're connected through that lotion of Chaim Vadoidus. So, comes along the Rabbeinu Aliyah and Mizrahi, and he wants to say a, a sort of a middle part. And he wants to say that you are allowed to change things a little if you want to, uh, and that's what Shalom Amelot did in, in the base of Midas, but it's got to be. Generally speaking, he says, the purpose of, the, uh, of Rashi was to say that in a general way, you have to make just like each clee had a certain um, how you call it, content and aspect to it. That's the way you've got to make the clee. Shurim and Inyonim, just like how many centimeters or how many tfachim uh, or how many amis and so on and so on. That's not so uh, important. The anals there, you know, how do you call it, the insistence. The main thing is they have to be katavnis. Tavnis doesn't mean exact. It's, it's like, you know, the content and the shape and the oven of the kale has to be in generally uh, the same as it was in the Mishkan. I would love to ask you with all the uh, details and all the union concern. And he wants to say 
that uh, the, the truth of the matter is that some of the kalim, uh, the Shalom HaMel of Ma'id, uh, do have a certain mathematical type of ratio to the ones made in the Mishka. It was so much by so much. Of the, but then he gets into a problem with the height of them is bad. He said the breadth of them is bad, yeah, and other in Yonim. But he said when it comes to the height, he can't quite, uh, he can't fit that in. And then he says that maybe that was a halakha of Moshe Sinai, that the height is not really important. The Ika is the, the breadth of them is bad which a little bit of an interesting, uh, you know, a little bit of a in a way, but that's what he says. Uh, but that's like a middle point. Do we go according to the main idea of all the Kalim, how they were in the Mishkan, or uh, the actual details and shoot him? That's not so tremendously um, good. And there, but on the other hand, uh, there was an attempt made, except in the case of the height of the Mizbeah, to ratio it, you know, the sizes, had certain mathematical ratios, one to the other. That's the, that's the, uh, the Rabbeinu Aliyah or Mizrahi. Well, if he's there, it would come out good why it is that we need to learn all the things in the Mishkan, not so much because of their, of their exact uh, measurement, uh, in, even though that's also mentioned in the Torah, but the, the main thing being, you know, the content and the shape in general, and the, uh, the what you might call the, the general uh, intention that there was with that Kli, or well, that has to be recreated in the Kalim of the Beis Amitush in Yerushalayim, and any generations to come. If you're in the Mishkan then you, and you lose it, then you have to make it, of course, the way it was in the Mishkan. And that's the Rebbeinu uh, Eliyom, it's like a middle point, like a middle gang, that it's not so terribly exact, it's built on a, like a general pattern, etc., etc. So, that's, like I said, that's very comfortable in certain ways. And to get to the the Kushia Ruchnia, you know, why do we need to know all these young? That would answer it well. And it does avoid certain cases when they get to the bear. However, comes along uh, the Erechaim Kodesh. He's got a very, very big uh, Arifas here on this Indian. And he doesn't agree with that either. He says that the, the Rabbein Aliyah, Mizrahi, He's got a good point, and he earns certainly not him, but he, he dismisses most of his uh, points based on different diukim that he's got in different uh, sugiyas, both in the Gemara and in the Majorshim. Well, it's not really the place here to go into all the diukim we don't have in front of us, the, um, the Inyonim. But suffice it to say that he does tend to uh, refute some of the arguments of the Rabbein Eliyahu uh, Mizrahi. And one of the main points is what do we need to know according to that? Why do we need to know the exactitude of all the different measurements, which are mentioned here, if they're not going to be really no gear and you can change them? So in a way, the Mizrahi does cover that by saying that it has to be somehow or another, you know, uh, ratioed mathematically to, you know, so many multiples of, or so many half multiples or whatever of that. But nonetheless, it's, uh, he said it's a, it's a slightly difficult position to hold, and he brings uh, certain proofs from other uh, sources. And he wants to say that uh, Rashi has a very good point, although the Kashi with the Mizbech, the, that the Ramanas and the Kuvim, uh, that's a, a difficult Kashi. So therefore the, the Urachayim HaKadosh reaches a, a very interesting type of a, uh, conclusion when it gets to the whole question. And he, he, he says like this, <coughs> If we look in the Gemara in the sect of Menachos, for example, it talks about the Menorah and the um, Mizbach Ketoros that there was you know, in, inside the Mishkan. There was a small Mizbach where they used to put the incense, the Ketoros. They were in the base of Mishkan, of Shlomi, exactly the same as they were in Mishkan. Also the Shulchan that Shlomi Miller made, just that he made more than one. He made ten Shulchanos. But the Shulchanis were all exactly, uh, and the same with the Manoeva. The Manoeva was basically the same size as it was in the, in the just that there were more of them. Shlomo, Shlomo made several Manoevas. He didn't just make one. And they were all in the, in the base of the Mishra. So, uh, says the other Hamakot, it looks uh, uh, peculiar. Certain things were exactly the same as they were in the desert, in the Mishkan. 
even though they were made new, but they were made exactly the way Takalai Rashi did. S something like the Kruvim and the and the um, the Mizbeach uh, outside in the in the Chota, and the Mizbeach outside in the Chota, they were they were different. So the Rambam says, why would it be like that? You know, why Kacha a, a very exact paying of attention to the way it was in the Mishkan, and there's another thing it's not. So he said, we have to be misbeinen. How do you get to the base of Mikdash in Yerushalayim? How, how, you know, where did you get to this whole thing that so much of it is different? There was a huge building in the Mishkan, and the desert was relatively small, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Even though you might find certain mathematical, uh, and there's a thesis in the to Shabbos, which also said that maybe there were certain mathematical uh, ratios between the sizes of the, of the building, but nonetheless it was a different building made of stone, not made out of crashium and all the rest of it. So, says the, the um, Dara Chaim HaKodesh, and he brings a very fascinating brysa in some uh, um, brysa, a series of brysas outside the Gemara and outside the Midrashim, and he says, it's written over there that Moshe Rabbeinu, he foresaw the base of Mikdash. And Moshe Rabbeinu, uh, he gave over Mina Shomayim certain ways that they should build the base of Mikdash, and he gave it over to uh, to Yeshua. And Yeshua gave it over to the Kanim, and the Kanim gave it over to the Navim, just like it's written in Pirkei and And the Navim gave it over. In other words, it just went all the way down and that those differences that were in the base of Mikdash were really all Mamish Mim Moshe Rabbeinu the Sinai. Mamish. And he said the building at a, at a bigger Mizbeach was Mamish. Uh, and he said in addition to that, he said there are certain things, for example, about the Kruvim, that they are hindered. And he learns the most amazing shot in the Psukim, but they get to the making of the Kruvim. That it, it would appear, if you look carefully in the psukim over there and you learn them carefully, it's like as if he's talking about one set of kruvim and he's hinting at some other kruvim. So uh, uh, he said, that's a remus that the Abish will put in the third. There's going to be another set of kruvim right at the time that we built the Mishkan. That is, we're being hinted at by the Abish. There's going to be another set of kruvim. And the same with some other prod. I just forget the, exactly what the prod is. He brings also that, you know, I think it's in reference to the menorah, that uh, it was hindered clearly, uh, uh, not the menorah, uh, no, no, not the menorah. Anyway, another uh, another Indian that he brings there, it's hindered clearly to certain strange little in the Pesukim, that there's going to be another type of that thing later on in the Beis Amidish, when it will be built in Jerusalem, which means that everything that happened was all according to halacha uh, 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 as it were, it was like kilui from Moshe Besinai. And in addition to that, he said there's a pasuk in Divrei Ayomim, but in Divrei Ayomim the pasuk says that everything Shlomo Amelach did, he did it through a novi, he did it through the Navim, and he said uh, Shlomo Amelach himself finishes the pasuk by saying, a kol yeah Hashem uh, uh, Hashem caused me to understand, and I wrote it down. In other words, everything I did in the base of Mikdash, I did through divine indication and uh, instruction. I didn't just dream up anything for myself, which means that it's clearly written that Shlomo Melech said that he didn't do anything that he didn't get clear uh, instruction from heaven. And according to some things came from Moshe Rabbeinu through the Nevi'im and the and the, and the, and the uh, Zikanim, just like uh, in Perkei which was written near the beginning. And when Mel Shalim Mel said, I didn't do anything on my own, I didn't change anything, and I didn't work out mathematical ratios. Everything that was given to me was, <coughs> everything I did was given to me from heaven. That you got a very interesting combination to, to the finish of the whole thing to so, sum it up. Some things you weren't given any instruction. 
Aye, those things where you weren't given any instruction, you have to go exactly according to what's written in Pasha Truma. Exactly what's written here, that's how you have to build the, uh, those came. That's what the Gemara Masek the Menachem said, the Menachem and the, and the Mizbacha Zohov and other things, they were exactly as they were here. However, when it came to the Mizbech, but the Rambanas, yeah, the Mizbech was different. And there there was a Mafurish and a Vua that he had, or instruction that he had from Moshe Rabbeinu. Yeah, I call a lie, Hashem, he skill. Hashem caused me to do that. And for some reason or other, known to Hashem, uh, that's how the Mizbech had to be made. And that's how other things, uh, the Kruvim, for example, that's how they had to be made. They had to be different. Uh, uh, according to uh, uh, a clear instruction from Hashem. And my mother says the Yerach it's like a, a combinatory, a combinatory teret. Uh, the teret is that some things have to be exactly the way they were here. Other things were altered, yeah, and they were Mafurish, Nevoah, Kabbalah, Moshe Rabbeinu, Mi Moshe Rabbeinu, through Nevi'im, and that's called Hashem Alai Hiskiel, I only did it according to the way it was indicated through divine sources. I didn't do it on my So I come to this, that, that what Rashi said, we can uh, now maybe slightly, uh, how do you call it, modify it. That what Rashi meant, that when uh, uh, in the basic Elohim, where you don't have any other instruction, then you have to go according to it. Or where there was a clear instruction from heaven, then Rashi's not talking about that. Lo, there, who done? And that's why... The, in the Gemara says the Shuiz, that we came to altering things in the size of them is bad. What there Moshe Rabbeinu didn't give us a uh, indication of the Shleim HaMelech, then he had to do everything exactly the way it was done in the Mishka. And all, all the Inyanim have to be exactly the way they are in the Mishka, and therefore Rashi's right. But Chain Ladoires refers to the Mishka and all the generations to come. In Melech often the Ramban, and not from anybody, it all sort of, and the, the Rabbeinu Eliyahu Mizrahi doesn't, we don't need his whole in because it all depends where the, there was a special Nebuah or where not. Where there ain't special Nebuah, that's when you have to go to it. That's the Yorah Chaim HaKadosh. Ad Khan, up to here, is the, the words of the Yorah Chaim HaKadosh. We face an interesting situation that we do go according to the, to the Mishkan, in, in many in Yonim, but when it came to the Beis Elomim, uh, the building of the Beis Amidash in Yerushalayim, that was a special uh, divine ins inspir inspirated uh, changes in certain, you know, not in all of them, but in certain ones uh, given to Shleim HaMelech according to the price of the Yerushalayim according to Spring, right back from Moshe Rabbein. I mean, it's an interesting killer combination. What well, Lefisa said, Kunta, he says the intelligent reader yeah, now is faced with a question, you know, why would that be? Why why would a you know, Hashem uh, in the Mishkan, he would say the Mizbah had to be like that, the crew had to be this way, uh, a certain other project as well, going to get to the number of the Shulchanis and all those things. And uh, in the time of uh, Shlomo Amalek, he gave another divine instruction, another Nebuah, differently. And I mean, so close off, the, the base of Mitzvah was very different than the Mishkan. I mean, it was built out of stones. It was, I mean, there, there are a number of things that very significantly were different. And Kamuva and the entire earth, the Bia Bepinimis, why it is that they were built uh, of stones, the, the, the Mishkan. Kamuva and Pasha Vaigash in the entire earth. So therefore, ask yourself the question, why, you know, was that? You know, lama, uh, lama kaka, lama in certain ways this way, and other ways were altered by divine inspiration. And then who comes along the um, story in the Sefer Kedusha Slavi from the Levi of Adichuas. And he, he says a very interesting thing. He said that the uh, chain tasu is not necessarily referring to uh, it, it, it you have to go into the generation. Uh, exactly the way you had in the Mishkan. V'chein tasu, meaning the way you did here, that's the way you should do in the generations. But v'chein tasu means you should do the way things were done here. How were things done here? That everything was done through a novi. Right? Everything was done through a novi. 
And Hashem indicated to Moshe Rabbeinu that this is the way the mission, with great intention, the detail, or this is the way the mission is going to be built. And that was a, a Makurish in the world. By Shlomo, according to the Erech HaMakurish, by Shlomo HaMelech, that was a different Nevoah and a different Gile Elakut. So he, he says an interesting Nakuda, the Vedicha, and he says that every generation is given Nevoahs according to its inyonim and its level. And therefore, Vachain Tasu means that you have to do, as it were, according to the way that the Novi or the, the, the uh, Inyone Elakut will show you in that generation, and he just broadens the topic of it. And he says, we have to say that in Moshe, in the time of Moshe Rabbeinu in the desert, why was the Mizbat that size? And other things that were changed later in the Mizbat, because that was what they needed, according to their Avedas Hashem. Well, that was what was Kilo had to be in order to carry out all the Hamshachas of the base of Midrash for Shleiman. In order that the Mizbat should be able to be Mali or the Kobanim. Adin, Seva, the whole Rita, that's what in Chsidus, yeah, had to have a Mizbat that size. According to the generation how it was at the time of Shlomo HaMelech, <coughs> they had to have a bigger misbeh, they had to have other, and the Kruvim had to be different, because it was different in Yonim that they had to be uh, uh, in their way as Hashem, and different in Yonim that they had to be Mamshik uh, Lamada, and therefore the Novi and the Elakus showed them in a different way. And he said, Mean put this way, meaning do everything according to what the Novi tells you, because he knows what your generation means, and what your generation needs, and what your particular Indian is. Therefore, when it's going to be the base of Mikdash, Shashlishi, Yecheskel and Novi has already revealed to us there are going to be changes. In base of Mikdash, Shashlishi, what's going to be built? Bim Heir of Yomeno, but it's going to have all sorts of different sizes and different arrangements and different Indian. Because then we'll be able to be poil all these tremendous hamshachas uh, 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 and revelations which are going to be at the time of Moshe's coming and the ruling and the binyan or the readers based on Mikdash Hashlishi Min Hashomayim. Well, that's going to come down. Look, <coughs> what will be the oifen of Aveda Oz? The details of the Mikdash will be different than according to what the divine revelation will show. And that's a very difficult Indian to understand how certain pratim will relate exactly. And that you have to be a novi, uh, a miti, uh, in order to understand. And we, we just have to be makabalim, but kabalas oil. A weyesh beko Indian built his sovic, sheyesh was a prat choshu, indicating what is going to be the true savedah, but is as much. Well, the fees there, come to this, according to the to the, uh, the believe it's the Baditua, we've moved into a slightly different uh, realm of thinking now why did these in Yonim take place? Because it's according to the necessity of the Aveda <coughs> in that particular time. Well, the fees there would always come in an interesting thing, but again, to um, the details in Aveda Sashem, that if we're going to say that in every generation when we don't have the Mish Kashmi, and we have Baruchnias, we have to serve Hashem according to all these potim. Kamavu and Dov Mitzvah we have to serve Hashem according to these potim. The Vachain Tasu, referring to that, based on that cut. <coughs> this is what I mentioned the other night at Dov's uh, voice. That we have to say that maybe there's a union that by each individual, he has to have his Novi, the Haino is Rebbe. <laughs> And uh, what every, every genuine Rabbi, um, Rabbi Amiti is a Novi. Avamila, he shows him what uh, the Oven Aveda, Avamila, in his Mizbech Pnimin, his mis there'll be certain Inyonim which are necessary for him, even though both they all go back to the Mishkan, but there could be certain changes according to what the Novi will say, not changes, but not changes in, in, in uh, relationship of the different Inyonim together, what's more essential for him and more, yeah, uh, 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 how do you call it, um, first and foremost in his Aveda, uh, but again to his relationship to his generation, etc., etc., each individual of he in Yon. And that's what he, he brings down. And also the Sefer Chinuch is, is Marek in, in that whole union, 
how the, the, uh, all the pratim and all the details that came, I show it to the, uh, uh, the person, uh, Bavidos, who we mentioned right uh, at the beginning of this year. Yeah, according to his movie and his revi, there might be certain developments in the relationship of the Kalim and his Aveda. When I get, and that's the Indian Ruchni, but it's connected with Chain uh, Tasu, the Chain Tasu Ladeiris, based on that whole principle. We could develop it into Ruchni, it's more Lapita Shitta, the Rabbeinu Levi Yitzchak, the Rabbi Levi Yitzchak, but did you ask? I'm not Lapita. From the that the, the Indian is not, it's not given absolutely to a cloud which just rules everything, but it's given to the Giluim yeah, of, of the Navim and according to the Araham HaKadosh, even to Allah Alamayish and Sinai. Like I developed it a little bit further in the Aveda of Allah Yidin, each one in his own particular Aveda, but again too. Aveda Ruchnias, Bezman, Shod, Ainat the Beis Amitish, Mamish Begolui. As I saw in another Sefer, that he he develops a, a little bit on that idea. And he, he wants to say, and he wants to bring out, maybe we could use the, uh, the famous expression, better late than never. Better late than never. <laughs> And I'm we, uh, we can suggest, and he brings down a Lushan in the Zohar Kodesh. But uh, it's very interesting. And that is that we see there was a base Amigdash Rishon, there was a base Amigdash Shani, and then it's going to be a, a base Amigdash Deliosi Glory. So <coughs> there's a Pusik in the Nach brought down uh, in Kamar Makimis where the church at. Um, Godel year by Zazer Ha'achrein min Haurishain. The greater will be this latter bias, this latter bias in history from the first one. So um, it's tempting to learn that bias Ha'achrein is referring to uh, the, the bias which can be built, Leosid Love, Ali De Moshia. However, uh, the Gemara and other places, they, it's, it's Mashma. The bias Ha'achrin is referring to by Shani. And what does it mean God of the year? Because it stood for another ten years more than what the the base of the uh, and also there were certain inyonim in the base uh Amitish Hashani, which we could maybe suggest that they earned the name Godel compared to the base of Amitish uh, uh, Anyway, but Clolus, it's referring in 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 the base of Mikdoshim, which were so far. Base Amitish Rishon is called Rishon. And the base of Mita Shane is called the last one, Achrin. And the base of Mita Shane uh, wasn't mentioned uh, by that possibly. In the Zohar Kodesh, it's, it's much more a little bit different. It's much more the Zohar Kodesh learned that the base of Mita Rishane and Shane are both called Rishan. And that was the both, yeah, the Bechina at the base of Mita, which was built by Bnei Odo. Dainu, yeah, by Shlomo Amelech, and then later by the the Khoizri, how the people came back from the Gos, Golis uh, Hashwedish, uh, uh, they came back in there at Shishu and they built Beis Samitish Hashani, albeit through the Anche Knesset Sagadela and through Navim and everything. It was a, a different thing, it was what's called in Siddhas, the Aveda Sabali Chuva, you know, it's like Melmata Lamaila. The Ilu Bais Rishon was Melmata Lamata, Bais Shani was Melmata Lamaila. Of Al Kaponim, they they are all together called Bayes according to the Zohar Kodesh. And Beis Amikdash Ha'achrein, God will hear Bayes Zohar Ha'achrein, Menorishin. Now that's referring to the Bayes, the Beis Amikdash Ha'shlishi, Shiyi Eliyosid Lovi, Beis Hashem. So he wants to say like this, and this is what's uh, important maybe for all of us here. That is that he says that we notice that the cloud, how is our Odom B'Tok cloud miscarried to to Eloquus. How does he get near to the Avisha and how does he become shy to the whole meaning of Torah? It's a, usually something happens that the Avisha brings him close. The Avisha yeah, makes a whole approach in his life and draws him in. Yeah, And then after that, the Avisha says, well, let's go. <laughs> and he says, from now on, it's up to you. 
that's up to you. And then the person falls into a period of his life where he's fighting and he, he's struggling because he doesn't feel the same tremendous sayata dishmaya, the help of heaven and the presence of heaven in his life that he did when he first when he first made his first approach. Now, you hear about this from a lot of Balichua. Over the years, I've heard from a lot of people who are called, generally speaking, Balichua. Yeah, the, at the beginning, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, it, you know, things begin to sort of um, droop and you sort of seem to be on your own. And what's going to happen now? So that's definitely where you've got to put yourself together. And that's when you've got to work very hard on your own. Oh, that's what a shem wants. He wants you to shoot kaviyohol. Strengthen yourself in yourself and do it yourself, as it were, to use the old expression. And then you come to a second ultimate perfection, which is a second connection with Hashem. It's a lasting and more connected one. It's come through your own that something which comes only Momaila, it doesn't have any uh, ultimate uh, perfection. In Something which comes only Lamata, it's hard, it's going to hold out. When there's been, first of all, a giving Milmaila, and you've worked on that and you've perfected that, Milamata, oh, then we reach a, a further status that the Avisha comes again and then he gives you a, a further shlema. Now, there's a famous story from the Balshemto. The Balshemto brought a marshal about a father, and I won't give you all the psukim and the mimer of hell because it's a, it's a bit confusing if you don't have them in front of you. But the, the basis of the marshal was that uh, a father teaching his child to walk, what does he do? He holds the child by the hand and he leads him. He holds, he holds him the whole time by the hands and the little kid there you know, goes through the long way. Then all of a sudden, the father takes away his hands. He takes away his hands. The, the purpose being that the child should learn how to go on his, on his own. So sometimes he falls, sometimes he gets into a mess and everything, oh, but the father doesn't want to give back his hands so quick. So he wants that the child should learn. Oh, well, where does that come from? Well, that comes from the Ava Atmir, so the father to the Duffy, because he so loves his son, he's so devoted to him, and he lets him, as it were, uh, fall or have difficulties, because he, he wants ultimately that he should reach the highest limit of being able to go on his own. <coughs> so that's, that's and in, um, in Kabbalah, in Oasis of Kabbalah, it's also a gear to Laila Seder. There's a whole thing in, in the way the whole Seder night functions. Then I get to, to this, but this is not a, a shear in the Laila Seder section <laughs> in Parsha Tumah. What it means is that according to the Kabbalah, is what's called godless Rishain, and then what's called Katnas, and then called godless Shade. Bigness, bigness, godless Rishain, well, it came from Hashem. Hashem, Hashem did it for you. And then there's Katnas. Katnas is when he let go and you, you drop. You tend to drop and you feel all limited and unable. It's called Katnas. And then you, get, you pull yourself together and you get, and you make the effort and you rebuild. Well, then you get Godless Shani. Then Hashem comes to you again and he gives you, as it were, all of his uh, help and inspiration openly again. Oh, but then it's everlasting. Then it remains and you remain on a very high and convinced and, and tremendous level. Yeah, Adla Nata, like the Rabbi says, Chaim Nitzki. And remember, that's a de Godless Shane. So the, the Sefer that I'm quoting, he wants to say that the base on Mikdash, Rishon, and Shane, even though the Shane had a certain amount of no matter mile in it, over there, altogether, Beaker, they were what was given to us, uh, no mile. The base on Mikdash, Rishon, for sure, they are the Gilui of Hashem's Godless Rishon. That, that brought Yidin into a tremendous state of, of almost ready to, to have Mashiach in the world. Can you do it? They got so high in Shogun Anor's piece of Amidish. Oh, but, uh, it didn't sort of hold for very long, and then it began to sort of drift a little bit, and in the end, Hashem saw fit, as it were, to withdraw his uh, uh, hands, and then there was like a, a collapse. And that's the union of the Golas, Rachman. So what is the union of the Golas that we should say, Rachman, and Stein, well, he fell, we're in Golas, you know, uh, uh, and that's it. The only way out is if Hashem's going to help. No, the answer is, and that's what Siddhas teaches, that you have to take the Golas and you have to be Mahavik the Golas yourself. You've got to do it, you've got to work, and you've got to struggle, even though you don't see the light and you don't feel the hands uh, holding in the Baal Shem Tov's marshal, you don't feel so much, you make a tremendous effort, and you keep being positive, even though it looks glum 